Yes, decision on Vinesh Fogart's appeal against disqualification for Olympic finals has been deferred till August 11, which is roughly 24 hours from now. Remember, CAS was expected to announce that big decision uh, in so some uh, minutes ago, but we are now learning that that decision has been deferred until 11th of August. That verdict has been deferred till tomorrow. Expect that decision to, in fact, arrive any time from now. But that's also sparked renewed hopes for Vinesh Fogart, her family. We also, CNN News 18 brought you that statement from her uncle Mahavir Singh Fogart, who's uh, talked about how there's renewed hope. They are hoping that the verdict may just go in favor of Vinesh Fogart, which as we all know will be an unprecedented situation for the world of wrestling and in fact for Olympics itself. Uh, but having said that, uh, there is much that is being debated at the CAS because we all know that the UWW or the World Wrestling Federation has also been very uh, clear about how they are very, uh, they would be sticking to the rules and that rules are rules today. If 100 grams is being debated over, tomorrow it could be 200 grams and even 500 grams. Let's quickly go across to Ananya Bhatnagar. Ananya, um, now that you know the decision has been deferred till 11th of August, what is it that's being uh, you know debated upon, that's being discussed at the CAS? Well, you know, there's a lot of confusion with regards to the verdict being pronounced on the 13th or the 11th. However, uh, there is a press release from, in fact, the Court of Arbitration of Sports that say uh, that very clearly the verdict is to be pronounced, uh, the, the extension has been given for a 24 hours uh, of, of today's time. So, very clearly and categorically, you know, uh, there, there is a likelihood and most likely the verdict is to come out on August 11. And very clearly, uh, at this particular point of time, you know, all hopes are high. Uh, you know, remember what the Indian contingent had argued that there was no foul play of fraud that was uh, played at the part of Vinesh Fogart and the whole recovery process, uh, you know, increased those 100 grams of weight and every athlete has in fact the right to actually replenish their body and that's exactly how you know, Vinesh's weight increased. There was no foul play, there was no, uh, you know, uh, it's not a case of doping or any kind of a, 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 a artificial substance that had increased that particular weight and hence, uh, it, is, it is a fair play that, that had happened and just because of little uh, recovery process that, that uh, this particular mistake had happened where 100 grams would increase so very clearly and categorically, Vinesh deserves to have a, a, a you know joint silver medal. Is what the Indian uh, contingent had argued, and in fact, the hearing uh, uh, during the particular hearing that continued for hours, one and a half hours, taken by Vinesh Fogart's legal team to actually argue this particular aspect. So you know, a very very uh, 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 favorable order might come in for, in fact, Vinesh Fogart. All fingers are crossed, and we are waiting for this verdict to actually come out uh, in, in the open and to know as to whether or not Vinish has been given a joint silver medal or not. Absolutely. And let's quickly go across to Shivani. Shivani, um, is there renewed hope now that the decision's been deferred till tomorrow? Uh, well, you know, one can look at it in um, any different way, uh, but uh, clearly it's taking a little bit longer mm. than uh, what was anticipated. You know, th this is going to be a complex case because the decision has already been taken in competition. Now to take a retrospective judgment or a, a verdict mm. to kind of overturn that and award a shared silver, which is what Vinesh Pogat is asking for, uh, is a very uh, extraordinary decision. So I'm sure uh, the sole arbiter in the case is looking at all kinds of things. What we are learning is that the decision has now been deferred uh, at least till tomorrow evening. Uh, we don't know it takes a little bit longer than that as well. But, you know, it's important to note also that tomorrow is the closing ceremony of the um, Paris Olympics. So officially the games come to an end tomorrow, even though some competitions would be going on. And uh, the longer it takes, you know, the harder it could become to kind of award her a shared medal. But uh, things have happened in the past as well where such decisions have taken time. Um, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. The arguments as far as uh, Vinesh's case are concerned are simple. Uh, the likes of Harish Salve and others arguing that the weight gain was natural. There was no foul play involved. There was no intent to cheat involved. 
and of course uh, the player has the right to you know supplement themselves with food and water uh, given their health concerns let's uh, wait and see if those arguments really cut the ice or not and when you're talking about arguments cutting the ice there's still hope that even if uh, that uh, verdict doesn't go in her favor there may be hopes for a repercharge considering uh, her initial preliminary qualifications up till the semi final were uh, deemed null and void is there hope considering you've also highlighted how olympics is now coming to a close uh no i think this is the last resort for vinesh pogar there can be no more uh, you know bouts uh, that she can go through uh this will have to be the just the absolute last resort because the competition is already over and uh, in any case by tomorrow the competition uh, overall as far as the olympics are concerned will also be over shivani could you also give us uh, a deeper sense of what is being argued at the cas uh, by uh, mr harish salve and the entire paris bar um there were a couple of uh, basic arguments that was uh, made which is that um, they, like i said there was no intent to cheat that there was no foul play involved as far as the you know overweight situation is concerned uh, uh that you know that that gives it a different dimension um also the um argument that was made was that you know it is a right a fundamental right of the athlete to supplement themselves um with food and water which is what the, uh, vinesh did after first day's competition or during the first three bouts that she had on the first day uh, she had to eat or drink because already to make the cut on the first day you've gone through very rigorous training and even you know starved yourself to a certain extent uh, to meet the weight category uh, the difficulty as far as this case is concerned is twofold one is that the rules were applied as they are mm-hmm. the rules of the federation Uh, the ioc also has commented on this case and they have said that the international federation's rules apply and there is nothing more that you can do and the second difficulty also is that um if you make an exception for 100 grams or 150 grams then where do you stop yes then do you stop at 150 or do tomorrow some, maybe a player says okay i was only 200 grams overweight what about me so it can open up a pandora's box uh, not to forget that anything retrospectively can uh, also open up other cases uh, but the world wrestling for the federation has been sympathetic to the fact that the rule in itself may need some over uh, um oversight but they have also said that this rule was brought in particularly with the intent to discourage players from playing in a category which is too far off from their natural weight which is what they were sensing players were doing when they were not getting quotas in their desired ca- uh, categories uh, which is in exactly the case in vinesh pogar's case as well and if she does win the appeal i know you said that this is also going to um open up pandora's box it's also not going to be a straightforward win shivani it will have larger ramifications for the sport of wrestling and, and this is also bound to have a ripple effect as far as uh, which may in fact extend to other olympic disciplines right yes absolutely uh, one because it will be retrospectively applied and then of course uh, not just within wrestling uh there could be other players who could come up with their cases that okay if you've done it in this case then what about our case it would also mean that some of the other federations who have their own unique rules and have had their own unique situations might also see challenges in the court of arbitration um where players may have felt that they were hard done by by some of the rules in the past What has been the UWW's uh, uh, chief argument? Is this just about rules, and why not uh, make an exception in her case when she's not even been held on doping charges uh, or similar charges like those? Well, doping is only one aspect yes. of um, rules, right? So, so yes, there is no doping angle as far as this case is concerned. but the uww's uh, argument is that one the rules are what they are and they have to be applied unilaterally to all players the same way um and secondly uh, like i said they already have said that you know the reason why these rules were brought in these are very uh, fairly recent rules but the reason why these rules were brought in was because 
players were going up and down the weight categories mm. uh, to play in the Olympics. The mm. Olympics already doesn't have all the weight categories that are available in other competitions. And then because only one player can play or qualify from one country, players try to go up and down weight categories to win their quotas. And they want to discourage that. They want to encourage players to play in the category which is most natural to exactly. them or closest to their natural weight.